Hi, this is Bob the Old Ham. Been on the air for 60 years now. And really enjoy amateur radio. Made a discovery the other day of these new type coax connectors. I've got this one here all apart. These are clamp type coax connectors. I don't know if you'd call them clamp type PL259s or what, but they clamp onto the wire rather than solder on the braid. You still have to solder the center conductor, but you can clamp them on. You can use them with aluminum coax. They are just super for aluminum coax. I know some of you guys uh, know that uh, I use RG11 coax uh, on my antennas, which uh, I get from the cable TV guys. Uh, they usually have ends, real, real ends they call them, and uh, if you go to uh, the place where the guys are loading up their trucks and that and ask them if they have any real ends, why well, usually you can find that they will either sell you or give you a real end. Or maybe if you buy them a lunch, they'll give you a real end. Uh, when they use the RG11, they use it for very long runs. And the pieces less than a couple hundred feet of RG11, they don't want to use it. They use RG6. So it's much easier for them to work with. So anyhow, that's the way I get my RG11. That's what I use for feed line. However, this is RG8 I'm working with right here now. And I wanted to show you how these connectors go on. They're very easy to put on. Uh, the first thing I do is I take a tubing cutter. This is a regular old tubing cutter like you'd use to cut copper tubing or whatever. Or brake line tubing. And I just go around about three times with it there making a uh, cut with it and then I take this carpet knife and I slit it down here about four times and when you get down to the braid you can feel it bumping over the braid you'll make a, a nick in the braid when you do that doesn't hurt a thing and then now this is this is I recommend that you cut it an inch and a quarter this is an inch and a quarter from here to here and uh, here we are, inch and a quarter, like that. An inch and a quarter is actually 3.2 millimeters for you guys who use the metric system. I'm still in the, in the uh, English system here. And then I cut off one quarter inch. That makes the uh, center insulation part one inch long. And the reason I do that is I can fold this over and turn it and twist it like that with my fingers and that makes it so easy to put the parts on. Otherwise, the braid gets in your way every time. Okay, so you got it back an inch like that. The next thing you do is, well, first, of course, you want to be sure you've got your compression nut on there already on your coax. Of course, I'm working with little bitty pieces here. And uh, you get your compression nut on there. And then you put your compression washer on. That goes on after the compression nut. Now this has got a bigger center hole inside diameter than the other washer. That goes on next, like that. And then the next thing that goes on is the rubber compression bushing. You push that on, like that. And now you have the compression washer. That goes on right here. Like that. Now you want to take this braid, I pull it back like that, and I use these small cutters here, and what I do is I just cut the braid off right now because there's so much of it that it really is hard to work with uh, if you don't cut some of it off. So I cut it off and I leave a little bit here, just cut it off like that. And then I push this back flat, like that. There we go. Got that flattened out. Then the next piece you put on is your bushing. Notice that's got uh, a piece that slides inside, and it makes contact inside all the way around like that. Plus, you get the compression out to here. So it makes a great connection with either aluminum or copper uh, coax. Now this is foam coax I'm working with and the foam coax is so hard 
to solder to without melting it in a PL259 regular connector. But on these is no problem. Now I'm using a 7 16 hollow shaft nut driver to push that bushing down in there. And you can probably tell by my voice that it's hard to do. And I'm getting it all the way down in there until it fits tightly against the braid. There we go. Now, you get to that point, take your wire cutters. I like these little ones for this. And just trim this stuff off all the way around. I hope I got the camera focused good for you there. Because I'm working on the other side of the camera. I really can't see what the picture's like. Okay, you want to get that cut all the way off, all the way around like that. So you just have that sandwich in there, and I think that could go down a little tighter. There we go. That's got it. Looks pretty good. Okay, now, the next thing we do is we take a sharp knife, and we want to trim this center conductor off close, right up against that bushing we inserted. Just like that. Round and round we go. Now on some coax, you can grab a hold of that and you can pull it right off. But not with this stuff. This stuff is really tough. And so what I do with this is I squish it or squash it several times. Like that. Like this. Like this. Several times. And what you're doing is you're breaking that loose from the wire in the center. Then you can take it and you can twist it like that. And you will feel it come loose. And then you can pull it off. If you squash it a whole bunch, it comes off easy. If you don't squash it at all, it is hard to get off there. See now how that's cut off? And I take a look in there to make sure I don't have any of this braid or anything short, shorting out my center conductor. And I see I've got a few little pieces of braid here that I want to get rid of yet. There we go. Okay. Now you can see how that really captures that shield in there. And it does the same thing with the aluminum too. When you're working with aluminum. Now the next thing you do is you slip this in like this and at this point you're supposed to solder this on right here. That's the only thing you have to solder and if you have to take one off that's the only thing you have to unsolder. You can take these off so easy. Then you slip the shell on, slide the compression nut in there. I'm going to change things around here. Slide the compression nut in and screw it into the back shell There she goes. And what I do, I hold these with a pair, a large pair of slip jaw pliers. There is flats on here so you can use a wrench. It's 16 millimeters but it has to be a very thin wrench. I don't have one like that. I looked all over for one like that. Don't have it. And then this back piece, 15 millimeters. Just take a 15 millimeters open end wrench and tighten the back. And you've got your coax connector installed. I run that back piece all the way down until it contacts the shell. I'm just doing a demonstration here, so I'm not going to do that. But here's one that's completed, put on there. And you can see little scratches here from the pliers I used. I don't worry much about that. Uh, I am going to try and find a thin wrench to put on here, 16 millimeter. But so far, I haven't found one. But the pliers work okay. and The little scratches don't bother me. So that's it guys. I really think these connectors are great. No possibility. There is no possibility of melting the center on these and causing a short circuit. And I think that is really neat. 
Also, they are so easy to put on and so easy to take off once you do them a few times. That's it, 73s and good DX.